if you're someone that your mom has given you a lot of her hand-me-downs and you don't wear it and you don't think you're ever going to wear it this might be you sitting on a pile of money hey guys welcome back to the power cause a space for perspectives where conversation meets style if you're new here hi what's up my name is Tumi. i make all sorts of videos from fashion conversation lifestyle and everything in between hello youtube fam how you doing guys have you noticed that my youtube channel is growing do you know why it's because some of you have been subscribing do you know what you're supposed to do hit that button below i <laughs> I sound like one of those YouTubers where it's like, come on, hit that button. I know you want to <laughs> put on the notification bell. But no, guys, I would really love to grow our YouTube fam. So it would mean the world if you hit the button, subscribe, press the notification bell, ding. And yeah, you can join the conversation. And I would love to literally just have more of you within my YouTube family. Anyway, guys, today we have a very interesting video. I say that literally every single week. So can we just agree that every video is interesting, please? Anywho, I was preparing and doing some work and I thought about how I really need to share with my YouTube family just how to make your wardrobe work. Because every time it's like, okay, unboxing, me buying new stuff, but can we also talk about using what we have? And I haven't decided on this title, but it's going to be something along the lines of girl math, making the most of what you have, how I basically made 300 pounds from my current wardrobe, which is pretty good by the way, especially within a month. And yeah, I haven't come up with a title, so we don't really have to give this video a title, but I basically want to speak to you guys about how it's so important to check your wardrobe because you might actually be sitting on a pile of cash that you don't know. And whilst it's really lovely to buy new stuff, like I love changing my wardrobe and adding new pieces, etc., etc. But something that I have said time and time again on this channel is that the Yoruba girl in me does not like to waste money. So I have to save my money, no matter what, like, I love discounts, I love a good sale, and I like to save money. So when I have things that I'm not using that I know can be turned into cash, I use them. Hence why a lot of the times when I'm speaking on this channel, I speak about how I love quality and I always make sure that there are things that have value. Like you have to have a bit of value because I want to be able to toss you if I can. Not that I do that for every piece, but it's really great if you can do this for every piece. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's jump right into it. So I've spoken to you guys about why I love like tossing some stuff in my wardrobe. But I thought it'd be fun for me to even talk to you about a few things I've actually sold in the past, how much I've made. And the 300 pounds, actually, you know what? Let's even start with the 300 pounds. What did I sell? So I sold some stuff on Vinted and Depop. And it was over a course of like three and a half weeks or so in Christmas. Now these were things that I didn't want and I felt like, okay, I just wanted to let them go and let them find a new home. So that was how I was able to make 300 pounds. And I took the money and use it for something else and I do this a lot so in the past some really notable items I've sold was like my All Saints jacket just because it literally was becoming an artifact in my wardrobe so my All Saints jacket I sold that ages ago on eBay another very very cool piece that I sold was my Chanel cruise collection trainers it was when Karl Lagerfeld was still creative director he had this cruise collection that was so beautiful and I remember the trainers being in green now you wouldn't believe what happened I bought the shoes and I think I sold them maybe two plus years after and I actually sold it for a profit. Another notable item were the classic Chanel sling bags. So it was when the Chanel sling bags were released and people were charging like 2,000 pounds for them on Vestiaire Collective. So I bought them for 500 and something pounds and I remember selling them for a profit. So I sold them for maybe like 600 I would say at least 630, 640. So I sold it for a profit. So those are just three items. Now, before everybody goes, oh, is this just like for people who have luxury stuff? No, not at all. I've also sold things from Zara, sold things from Massimo Dutti, sold things from Cos. But we're going to get into it because I really want people to make the most of what they also have. Not that you're just constantly thinking of only buying new stuff. And if you want to buy new stuff, like please, there is no shaming it. I know me, I like it. So look at my channel. I love it. But I also don't like wasting money. So yeah, I'm going to tell you a little trick or two. Well, I'm going to tell you some tricks that can help you make the most of your wardrobe. So I thought I would structure this video a bit so that it's not all over the place. And the first thing we're going to focus on is how do you know what to sell? Now, I feel like the easiest way to know what to sell is how often do you wear it? 
do you actually wear like I hate the idea of just like accumulating a lot of stuff and I don't wear them it actually annoys me so if you look at your wardrobe and you haven't worn it once in the last two to three years sis bro you gotta let it go like okay fair enough there are some pieces that you can't for sentimental reasons etc but check your wardrobe there are a lot of things that we can actually get rid of and give us some money but we're not even aware of it just because we've just never really thought about it but if you're not wearing something so you have an item of clothing you haven't worn it for at least two years chances are first of all i, I don't mean to go there right like I'm, i don't mean to go there does it even fit you does it fit you i remember i bought these jeans they were so nice i wore them for like a few years and i kept keeping these jeans in my wardrobe i only just let it go two weeks ago because i kept saying i would lose weight to wear it again did that happen no it didn't happen like obviously i could still fit into them but by the time i sat down i was like to me who are you kidding this thing is too small for you let these jeans go like just let them go they were absolutely beautiful jeans they were so well tailored like they fit me so well i remember like they were one of those jeans that when i wore them people would be like oh my god where did you get these from i thrifted them i think i went to like camden or something and i got them for like 20 20 something pounds if not camden i thrifted them in new york i tend to thrift some of my jeans and um then get them tailored which is why they fit me well so I didn't want to let it go for sentimental reasons and because they were so beautiful but at the end of the day I hadn't worn them in over two years so I was like this is becoming ridiculous let it go so first question I would implore you to ask yourself is what do you have in your wardrobe that you actually don't wear like there's no point having a lot of stuff that are allow me to say this useless you need to get rid of some things and look at the things that actually have value and you can use the money to invest it into things that you actually like my next question to you would be have you outgrown an item and when i was writing and like thinking about this video one thing that came to my mind was a specific brand now no shade to it not throwing any shade at it at all i feel like they definitely make some very good staple pieces but the brand that came to my mind was brandy melville do you guys remember the days of brandy melville like i'm a young adult approaching my 30s and look brandy melville that was when i was in uni like starting uni that was when i used to wear it now i'm not saying you can't wear it if you're this age of course not by no means am i saying that but think about brands that you feel like you've outgrown have you outgrown and it might not even be just brands but just styles of clothing maybe it's too short like you used to wear micro mini skirts <laughs> my pastor calls it belts <laughs> Maybe some of your clothes from back before they were belts. Maybe it's time to let those go. Or you know how we say crop top. This one is not a crop again. It's now bib top. It's, it might as well be reaching your neck. Are you thinking about letting that go? So those are some examples. Have you outgrown a brand or a style? It might not even be a brand. So look at things you accumulated during a time. Uni, boarding school. When you were in secondary school, you have all these clothes. Now, not all of them might be things you want to just give out to charity, but are there some that can be sold for money? and you use it to do something else as opposed to having like you have five wardrobes and four out of five of them you cannot wear all the clothes in there like like sis the third thing i was going to speak about was <laughs> does it fit you so obviously i've already touched on this because i told you guys my secret about the jeans i just recently let go but that is something that you generally have to ask yourself do the clothes fit you now i understand people buy like clothes in like smaller sizes because you know they want to set themselves a weight goal i I am not debunking that at all neither am i trying to shame you not at all this video is not to shame anyone and i don't even want to make those kind of videos anyway right but at the same time if you set yourself a very like crazy unrealistic goal and it's it's not aiding you but it's actually make, like, almost like you're bullying yourself please don't do that with your clothes like clothes are supposed to make you feel confident they're supposed to make you feel empowered they're supposed to make you feel good about yourself so i don't want your relationships with your clothes to be something that makes you feel sad just buy clothes that fit and let go of the ones that don't because you will find clothes that are beautiful that enhance your body as you are so please check if you're holding on like i told you guys i opened my own closet i told you i was holding on to these jeans because i was like i'll lose i had to get out and then there was also this lady i saw i don't think this had anything to do with her waist but just that she didn't wear these clothes again buttressing the point she i need to check how much she ended up making so obviously hers is a little bit different because she had archive pieces from like chanel that were extremely rare so uh unless you're her and you're watching this video then it, that might be quite rare but she did make a lot of money from it um and a lot of pieces i'm not even sure they could fit her again but 
they were pieces that were highly sought after and she sold a lot of them in an auction and if you're interested definitely go and look her up the next thing you want to think about is how can i sell this item as quickly as possible because you know what is really annoying getting really excited about getting rid of your clothes or like making money and at the end of the day it doesn't sell it just stays there and we just hear like cricket sounds for like nine months you don't even sell one item it's so annoying like there's nothing that gets me more excited than when i check my email from like vinted and i see that somebody has bought my item it makes me so happy like i get so excited because it's like money coming back into my pocket so i want to give you guys tips on how you can maximize your chances that something will sell and the first thing i have to say is is it the season to be selling it so case in point do you get emails from H&M advertising sandals in the winter? No, right? No, they advertise boots in the winter. Exactly. What am I saying? You have to sell clothes and sell pieces in season. So we're entering spring, which means people are going to be looking for trench coats, ankle boots, give or take, ballet flats, and things that are appropriate for spring. Some people who are looking ahead might even be looking for items for the summer. It is unlikely that people are going to be looking for very thick puffer jackets when we are entering spring. So you have to think about what is more likely to sell in this season. Some are really looking for, you know, coats with a pop of color that really scream spring. What do I have in my wardrobe that screams spring? Now, of course, there are going to be some things that don't fall into this whole seasonal bucket. Like if you have a very expensive designer item, like for example, Chanel trainers, I don't really think they are subject to spring or winter. People are looking for that in and out of seasons, which are pieces that I love, by the way. So just bear that in mind. If you've decided that, oh, I want to sell my Stortz Weitzman boots, you probably might be able to get a sale for that if you put them maybe February, late February. But if you start putting them in like June, nobody is really looking to buy that. Like the amount of people that are looking to buy that is much less. So you really have to factor that into, um, take that into account. How many people are actually searching for the item it is that I want to buy? Because I feel like that really, really changes the game. I really believe that that was why I was able to sell so many things on Vinted last month, or rather two months ago, in the sense that I sold a coat. It had like over 500 hits. I think I sold it for 85 pounds. Okay, so it wasn't that much, but in contrast to how much I bought it for and when I bought it for, didn't do too bad. I remember selling um, shoes from Massimo Duty. They were £37.50. And okay, I don't remember how much I bought it for, but I know that I didn't sell it too far from the price that I got it for because it's Massimo and Massimo is very high quality. And it's something that people would appreciate because if you're a corporate girly, that's a shoe that you can wear in and out of seasons. And if you're just someone that wants to use it for dinner, you can definitely wear sling bags any day. So just giving you an example about the kind of items that I was putting up. In contrast, on my Vinted, you'd see that there is a bright blue dress from Coast that I wore from my brother's engagement party a few years ago that hasn't been sold. Or a random bag that I have from Topshop from like five years ago that hasn't been sold. And hey, am I surprised? Not really. Now, do I love those pieces? Absolutely. But they haven't been sold. To be honest with you, I'm in retrospect, I might actually take that blue dress off because that dress is actually very, very stunning. But it's just giving you a flavor of how you should think about your items. The next thing that I want you to think about to increase your chances of selling is think of popular brands and old items that you know are people's favorite. And a good example to butch at this point is the famous Ralph Lauren cable knit sweaters. So, like across my family, I feel like we have a lot of them. I don't want to say a lot of them, but there was once a time where we really, really liked those knitwears. And Ralph Lauren does these cable knitwears that are so good, very comfortable, and in all sorts of qualities, styles, etc., etc. They're very beautiful. But I found that some of mine were one, maybe too old, two probably too small, three, they just weren't my style. So I had these expensive sweaters that I knew retailed for over like 90, 100 pounds, just sitting around. And it wasn't even me, my sister, my older sister had, she has a collection of them. I don't even know why I didn't take it from her because I remember, if you guys remember one of my Glasgow vlogs, I feel like I may have shown one or two, I think I did, where she had given me like a bag of clothes and i think they were like two very good quality pristine condition ralph lauren knitwear jumpers so i wouldn't necessarily say they're my style right now they, they really aren't like i don't reach for a ralph lauren jumper hence why i sold mine do you have some of these in your house because there are people that have 
tons in all sorts of colors but they actually don't wear it anymore and it's not because Ralph Lauren is not a cool brand it's just not my style anymore it was something that I wore a lot when I was in boarding school or when I was in uni so those are some of the things that I want you to think about or like Coz, Massimo, Zara these are brands that get a lot of hits particularly things like Massimo and Coz because they are more expensive people are always interested in buying them pre-owned because they know they can get a bit of a bargain so do you have anything that is from these kind of high street premium brands that you can toss because you don't wear it it's such a great way to make extra cash and actually reinvest it into your wardrobe or use it for something else. One more thing I would say on this whole checking to see if it's popular, vintage pieces. We're in a time where people love vintage. Literally, I said my pre-love luxury handbag collection. I love vintage. I'm constantly finding new vintage stores that I can buy stuff from because I love my brand new straight out of the box from Hermes and Selfridges, but I also like vintage. Like I like both because I think it adds character to my outfits. If you're someone that your mom has given you a lot of her hand-me-downs and you don't wear it and you don't think you're ever going to wear it this might be you sitting on a pile of money especially if you have like vintage Versace vintage Gucci vintage like please if you are one of those people can you actually just type it below <laughs> and let me know because I can assure you that I am one of your buyers I am always looking always on the lookout especially if you are a size 40 I am looking I am willing I am ready like I'm definitely one of your buyers so that's a very very great way to get money if you have vintage designer pieces people love those kind of things better yet you could even sell it directly to like brands so like try and find all these archive shops that take people's vintage pieces and list them for a premium or consignment stores that's also another option of course you would have to pay commission so maybe not just go directly so we've spoken about the items finding your items now where are you gonna sell them huh where are you gonna sell them where are you gonna sell where are you going to sell? Where are you going to sell? Okay, let's get back into the video. Now, let's speak about the platforms that I've used. So, me making 300 pounds was across Vinted and was mainly Vinted though. I would say about 80 to 85% of the proceeds came from Vinted and then the rest was Depop. And the reason why it was even Depop, it's actually a Vinted sale. So, to be honest with you, 100% of the proceeds were from Vinted. It was a Vinted sale, but because it was an item that I couldn't sell because they don't allow you to sell fur unless it's faux, and that was raccoon fur, I couldn't sell it on there. So I asked the customer like hey, would you want to buy it because I had also listed it on my Depop I was like, would you want to buy it on my Depop and she said yes So she went to Depop and she bought it off there I'm not gonna speak to you guys about the different platforms and the first one since we're already speaking about it is Vinted now Vinted why I love this platform is as a seller you pay 0% commission on everything you sell which is really really good because other platforms that I've used in the past they charge a commission and that commission thing can be so annoying annoying especially when you charge a commission on the platform then you charge a commission on the way what's this thing the platform that you use to collect your money so you're just getting cut 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 which can be so annoying and then you also have to like think about your shipping but i think all of them now give you shipping options but in the past it used to be such a hassle but i have had the most luck and the best time actually on vinted i feel like they have done in terms of like shopping experience ease and just being able to sell my stuff that's been the one that i've had the best luck now of course if you have other options i'm always willing and ready to try new things especially if they have zero percent commission definitely put it down below and i can have a look but i really really love vinted i like how easy it is to use as a seller now so it's going a lot about the pros the con about it is that the buyer has the option to choose their method of postage which is fine but it just means that sometimes you might find yourself going to like random drop-off points but i've I've actually made it happen like when I sell my stuff I just use it as my way to get in steps so it's not too bad that was the only annoying thing but hey regardless of the platform you have to get out of your house to sell the clothes right it's not like they have a pickup service and unless someone is an entrepreneur here looking for a new business idea so please yes if they can make a return service where they pick it up from people's houses I would hug them to death but I think that already exists doesn't it with like every and stuff but I digress so that was the only thing that used to annoy me the second platform that I use that is really great is eBay now eBay is super good but my issue with eBay is that there's just so many things it's like a volume of clothes <laughs> like you have so many options so many filters like there's just to me it can sometimes feel like putting my clothes in a place where it's like needles in a haystack 
how is my stuff going to be found? Of course, I'm sure you can use like SEO and they give you like, like I know when one good thing about eBay is that when you're uploading, it gives you like a template, which makes it easier for you to upload your clothes onto the platform. But at the same time, I can find that a little bit frustrating because it's like, this is not my item. But I know that the aim of that is to help you upload much faster which I give them credit for because it's just easier for the seller however with eBay you would definitely pay commission for sure and I haven't sold on eBay in a while so I don't know what their situation is in terms of like payments if you pay commission again on getting the money so in contrast to Vinted I forgot to say the story guys with Vinted you get the money straight to your bank account so you don't pay commission off that either so it's very attractive especially if you're like a student or like a young adult trust me it's probably the most cost effective and the most lucrative if you're trying to maximize how much money it is that you get back into your bank account now I really like eBay because I feel like it gives you an exposure to a wide variety of buyers but like I said my only real downside about it is just needle in a haystack now the final platform that I've tried is Depop now Depop is incredible for finding like vintage pieces however <laughs> My issue with Depop is I haven't actually gotten that much success from on there. So that was me. Maybe the Depop girlies just didn't want my stuff and that's fine. But for you, you might be very, very, you know, successful and get very lucky on there. But for me, I haven't gotten that much success on there. In the past, I used to. So a few years ago, I used to sell quite a bit on there, but lately, not so much. I feel like things just kind of sit there and it's like a cricket sound kind of vibe. So that's just something to bear in mind. But if I were you, I would put my items on all three platforms. I feel like it is super duper important. Depop also charges commission off your sale and you'd pay a commission for their partner to send, like when they want to send it to your bank, I think. But you can check that out in their like terms and conditions. Anyway, I think those are the three platforms. Is there any other thing that I forgot to tell you? Oh yes, how can I forget to tell you this? Guys, one very important thing about maximizing your chances of it selling, please iron your clothes. Don't go and squeeze, you squeeze the clothes, you'll be rumpled, rough. When you are looking at H&M, do you see rumpled clothes? No, I'm not asking you to go and start ironing, but at least make the clothes look decent. Put it on a plain background, hang it in a hanger you don't have to be standing awkwardly put it on a hanger and just make it look a little bit decent because you see some people they will be one scrunched up something like i can't even the whole point is they should be able to visualize what the item will look like on them like if i can do that i'm good i don't need you to model it I, like i don't even though some people make me do that sometimes and it's so frustrating but anywho just make it look nice now the final part of the video is i just wanted to have some fun with you guys and just let you know what i'm thinking of selling and some things in my wardrobe that I'm really considering tossing. The first thing will be, I'm gonna, hold on, let me bring it on set. First thing will be this bag. Don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, it seems like it's reflecting quite a bit. It looks like a snow globe. <laughs> but it's a clutch from Mango. It's a very famous clutch. Like I remember last year, this was like one of the hottest clutches of the season. And I remember buying it and just being so happy. But I don't actually want to share why I want to sell it, but there's a whole story behind why I want to sell it. But every time I think of selling it, my friend tells me, she's like, to me, don't sell it here. It's like, just leave it. Maybe in like a few years, we'll fall in love with it again. And okay, you know what? Let me just be honest with you guys. I just kind of felt like it was a bit overdone. That's actually the truth. You know when you buy something and you're like, oh, you're sick. And then you look left, you see it. You look right, you see it. You look up, you see it. You look down. I was like, my God, like, come on. How are y'all going to have this? It was like wearing a uniform at some point in time. And whilst I appreciate that, I sometimes just don't exactly like that vibe. So I was just a bit, it was everywhere that I went. So it just made me think maybe I should just hold on to this for a while and then later on I'll bring it out. So as you can see, I haven't even worn it, right? The tag is still on. I literally haven't worn it. I bought it last year. I probably won't put it in one of my shopping vlogs. I haven't worn it. So that's something that I'm definitely thinking about selling. The second thing would be these boots that I've had for a while. They're all saints. They're called the Cubista boots. Now they're very beautiful shoes. So stylish. I got them when I was in uni. I feel like I got them for over 200 pounds. I believe I bought them from eBay actually. I don't think they were up to 200 pounds. I think they were below 200 pounds. And on Depop, funny enough, this is one shoe that has gotten quite a lot of traction on Depop. I've gotten people sending me offers multiple times, but I always miss the offer. never see it on time. And 
really I don't get the release to sell them I feel like every time I want to sell it like the Holy Spirit is like don't sell it so that's something that I'm telling you I'm considering selling but I, I don't think I'm gonna let it go is there any other thing I know I think those are the only two things I'm thinking about letting go right now but of course if that changes definitely follow my Vinted my Depop and all my platforms you'd see like the stuff that I'm thinking of letting go of but I will tell you whilst this is a very great video please 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 do not sell things on impulse think it through because I wanted to give like a cautionary note please don't just sell everything you see because I did that one time when I was in uni and there was one item I regret selling and it is these beautiful culottes from Solace London. So it was when Solace London just launched and the prices were not like what they are right now. And I was a diehard Solace London fan. I sold three things, actually it wasn't one, it was three things, now I regret it so much. It was a white dress from Solace London, these lovely trousers from Solace and black culottes. There were three things and then I tossed them because I wanted the money in uni, right? But I didn't really think long term about my collection because now those pieces would have been phenomenal. Okay, I know there's the argument would I have been able to fit into it, which is pretty, to be honest, I wonder if I actually would have been able to fit into it, which is a fair argument, but they were so beautiful. They were so stunning. They were such steals and all of them, I got them for such a good price. So I sold all of them and now I regret it. So please don't just go and be throwing everything out of your closet. Please don't do that too. I've come and said that you found it from Power Closet's channel. You did not hear such things because I gave you a disclaimer. But that's it guys. I hope you have really enjoyed watching this video. I have had a lot of fun talking to you. We're gonna pretend like you're here with me. Maybe one day guys, would you be down for that? But let me know if there's anything that you're going to let go of and if this video was super informative and insightful, please let me know. Don't forget to put the thumbs up and like, subscribe, send it to anyone that you feel like would really appreciate this video. Don't sit on cash. Definitely use the money to invest in your wardrobe again or use it for something else, put it in your business. I don't know, add it to your savings spot, do whatever it is that you please, but don't sleep on cash it is that you have. And I think that would be all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.